Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In this video, I'm going to try to make a railroad speeder, or homemade rail cart. Now, I've had a couple of these in the past. If you've seen my prior videos, you may have seen the horrible antique metal one, and you've probably seen my horrible plastic one that kept derailing constantly. My hope here is to make one that actually stays on the track, and that I can take out to some abandoned railroads for a bit of fun. Now, I always use fully abandoned railroads that are cut off from any rail traffic and that have no possibility of a train coming along. This is not something I recommend doing at home. This is my previous rail bike with plastic wheels, and it didn't work very well. The wheels just kind of fell apart, and they weren't really rigid enough or strong enough to be used on railroad track. So now I have these rubber wheels, and these are solid rubbers. So they're pretty heavy. And they actually have a very slight taper to one side, so if you lay them flat, they want to tilt over because one side of these wheels is actually a little bit thinner than the other side. And that's what you want for a railroad car. You want almost a conical shape on your wheel so that it self-centers. So hopefully these will work better than the plastic barrel lids that I had previously. I just need to make a flange and get these mounted into a frame of some sort. I'm definitely saving it for parts here because I'm reusing all the bits from my prior rail bike that didn't work very well. Alright, there's an abandoned railroad around here somewhere. It's just a lot of stuff growing up around it, so we're gonna have to do some brush clearing. We've got the basic frame of the train done, and now I want power. I'm tired of pedaling around on that rail bike thing, so I'm going to throw a 12 volt DC motor on there and a car battery. Now I've got an old trolling motor, and as much as I hate to use boat motors for land vehicles, I've got tons of outboards down here, so I don't really need this electric one. And then I might just rob the battery from my tri-hole boat here. This is designed really poorly. The shaft here is just hollow, so water can get in there, and um, apparently all the dead ladybugs can also get in there. Okay, so the little trolling motor was far too small. But, I did find this guy at work on the junk pile. This is a 12 volt motor. It's um, pretty huge. It's going to suck my battery dry almost instantly, so I might have to upgrade my battery. But I think we're going to try this guy. I also got these wheels from Axeman, because really my little, my little wooden wheel here is kind of junk, so I was using that as a flange on these guys. I'm going to upgrade to this as the flange. The only problem with this motor is that it's got this weird keyway inset shaft. I think it's designed for a hydraulic pump or something. So we're going to have to make an adapter to have our power come out. And I don't have any machining tools other than a drill press, so we're just going to make it mostly out of bolts and garbage like everything else around here. So that motor isn't working either, because I can't figure out how to adapt to that wacky shaft. So I have one more thing I can try. Got this 36 volt electric lawnmower that I just picked up for $12 at University Surplus. It's self-propelled, which means the battery drives the wheels, and it's even got a charge in the 36 volt battery. So let's see if that'll run a train. 
Here's a fantastic design tip. Have your motor be open and exposed to all of the grass clippings that get up underneath the motor housing. So, Yardworks. Um, I've never actually used them, but based on their wonderful design here, I would never pay money for a new one of these. Alright, I do not have an electric motor big enough to power this thing, and for once, Axeman has failed me. So I guess it's back to the antiques. I guess this one is slightly less rusty than most of my gas engines. The old safety nozzles on here are the worst thing in the world. They are not safe, they always leak every time I use one of those safe ones. I cover myself and everything around me in gasoline. So you gotta go down to the hardware store and get yourself one of these unsafe ones which are a thousand percent nicer and spill way, way, way less gas. I don't know what they were thinking when they came up with that OSHA approved nonsense. I already don't think much of that pull handle. It's starting to fall apart. Anyway, I wasted my time with that, but I've got another motor. I did bite the bullet and pay a hundred bucks for this. Let's open it up and see if it's going to work for our train. So theoretically, this is an 800 watt, 36 volt motor with a little gear train built into the front. Alright, so now I have to take off the electric lawnmower motor take off my belt drive nonsense and convert this over to a chain drive which means I have to redo my wheels for like the fifth time. chain keeps jumping off. I need like a tensioner or something on here. Actually, I've lost a nut from my finally, finely engineered gearing system. So that's why the chain keeps popping off. Oh geez, here come the parkies.
This thing may not be fast, but at least it's ugly. Alrighty, I think my railroad go-kart is ready to go. It's uh, working pretty well. It's got a few issues to work out still. So I'll sign off on this one for now. Go ahead, like, and subscribe. Make sure you're tuned in the next time we bring this thing out on a longer trip. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.